In America, middle age is always approached with either regret or remorse or grudging tolerance. And the truth is that every transition to a new stage of life is always a mix of anticipation and nostalgia. And the reality is that this is the best time to be middle age uh, than it ever was before. Our, we're healthier, we're in better economic shape despite the recession. The average lifespan is longer than it's ever been before. You have to look at middle age as a time when there's a lot of possibilities now that there never were before. When I talk about the invention of middle age, I always get a kind of quizzical look. Obviously, people have always been middle aged and lived to their 40s and 50s. What happened at the end of the 19th century, as you had urbanization and industrialization, people became much more conscious of age because in factories younger workers were valued more in, than older workers. Women had fewer children and so suddenly at 40 and 45 for the first time they were done with child raising and this whole new episode in their lives opened up. And so middle age was differentiated between other stages in their lives. There were a few things that surprised me when I was researching middle age. One, of course, was the, the kind of myth of the midlife crisis, that that did not really exist. The second was the myth of the empty nest. Um, as it turns out, quite often, parents, not only mothers, but both parents, um, even though, of course, they're sad when their kids get older and go off to college, there's also a new freedom that they didn't realize they had before and an opportunity to engage in new interests. Um, a lot of couples actually talked how it, it benefited their relationship more and they got closer. There's a lot of work that's been done on researching the links between physical and emotional health. And what's most interesting is discovering what you can do in middle age in order to have a healthier and happier life later on when you get older.